my scripture, I want to go to Luke chapter 4, in verse 14. It said, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. The news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, that was his hometown, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, and his, it was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled the scroll back up, gave it to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And all who spoke well of him and were amazed at all the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They ask. So, what I want to preach on this morning, he has anointed me, okay? Jesus said, the Lord has anointed me. Jesus comes to his hometown of Nazareth, and he's preaching to his, home, his hometown, his home people, people he grew up with. If, if we're going to use modern, the, this new, this language changes each generation, right? These, these new words would be Jesus is preaching to his homies, his squad, his crew. The older I get, the weirder these words get. But then I think when I was younger, they thought the words I used were weird too. So it's all good. It's all okay. And actually, what I didn't, I didn't read, you got to go further down. He's preaching to his hometown crowd, and they got so angry at him for what he said, and they said, well, this is, this is Joseph's son. And they got angry at him, and Jesus said some more words, and they got even angrier, and they took him out to a cliff, and they tried to throw him over a cliff. Okay, and then the Bible said Jesus just kind of walked through them, and he, he got away. So the first thing I want you to glean from that is if you're having a bad day, which you will, just remember, no one tried to throw you off a cliff, right? So remember, so remember that if you're having a bad day. And for, for preachers, it's kind of like, you know, I know over the years when I started, there were some people who didn't, maybe weren't interested in what I was saying. They just went to sleep. They just tuned me out. As soon as I started preaching, they just went to sleep. No one tried to throw me off a cliff. Threw me in a lake one time they tried, but not a cliff, okay? Jesus is saying, this is me, okay? This is me that we're talking about. This is me that the scriptures are talking about, and I have come to fulfill what the scriptures say, okay? Let's look at this. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. Okay. He has anointed me. Now in the Bible, in the old Bible days to anoint someone, they would anoint them with oil. Okay. Sometimes it was frankincense oil, or sometimes it was hyssop oil. And, and what the, to, to anoint the word anoint, you know what it means? It means to rub the skin with oil. That's all it means to anoint is to rub the skin with oil, okay? They would rub the skin with oil. Back in the day, back in my day, when I started preaching years ago, I preached in the Assembly of God churches. And it was very common for the pastors to use oil to pray for people. One pastor, because just, you just take a little oil and you rub it. So some pastors would take the whole bottle and just dump it on their heads. I don't know if that's when they thought you were really a big sinner or what, but they'd, they'd dump the whole bottle. Most of, them just took, most of them just took a little bottle, and the oil that they would anoint people with was symbolic of the Spirit. It was symbolic, and I, I would do it a little differently. I, I would do it a little differently. I would call it the oil of something. And guess what? I have a little bottle of oil with me today. Watch this. This is how we would do it. 
This is what we would do. I'd say this. See, we just take this little bottle of oil, and I would do this. I'd say, Bobby, I anoint you with the oil of gladness. I'm so glad we're friends. Norm and I anoint you with the oil of happiness. You make me happy. You know that? Merle, I anoint you with the oil of thanksgiving. I am so thankful we're buddies. Mickey teaches fifth grade. I anoint you with the, with the oil of perseverance and patience. How about that? I anoint Laura with oil because I know she's mad at me for... <laughs> no. <laughs> I anoint Laura with the oil of thanksgiving because I'm thankful for her. And watch this. I'm going to anoint Joe Signago. I'm going to burn up now. <laughs> I anoint him. With the oil of gladness. Because even though he seems crabby at times, he's one of the happiest people you're ever going to meet. That's how we used to do it. Not bad, is it? If you want me to anoint you later, you come up to me and I'll anoint you with oil right here. That's how we did it. That's how we did it back in the day. Okay? And then it smell good. It's hyssop oil. It's oil from a hyssop tree. When Jesus would say this, he'd say... He said, I, I, he said, the Lord has anointed me with his spirit. He has poured his spirit on me, okay? In other words, the spirit came upon him, and that was where his power was at. Now, you know what else anoint means? It means, it means to choose someone. To be anointed, it means you're chosen, okay? Hey, you've heard this term before? They anointed him the next quarterback, or she's been anointed as the next team leader. You've heard that. In other words, anointing also means that someone's been picked or someone's been chosen. You know, when we say Jesus Christ, Jesus, a couple of weeks ago I taught you meant Joshua. Do you know what Christ means? Do you realize that's not his last name? It's a title. It's actually, if you want to get really theological about it it's really jesus the christ jesus the christ christ is a title and it means the anointed one that's what messiah jesus the messiah christ it means he is the anointed one he's he's the chosen one okay jesus was chosen he was anointed by the by the spirit and he was also chosen now i want to tell you this god will anoint you as well with your spirit with his spirit. God will anoint you if you need it. God will anoint you if you ask for it. God will anoint you with the spirit if there comes a time when you really need it. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to give you the most simplistic, easy to understand. It's almost embarrassing about the illustration I'm about to give you about, about the anointing of the spirit and the power it gives. Okay, you ready? This is the most basic simplistic illustration I can give you about when God anoints you with the Spirit. Remember the old cartoon Popeye? Remember Popeye? And he had a crush on olive oil. I don't know why, but he liked olive oil. <laughs> she seemed a little needy, but anyway. Um, and then Brutus, the big Brutus, about like Joe's size, Brutus... Always was, was fighting Popeye for olive oil's affections. And then, and then, and then he'd, he'd, take, he'd take Popeye and he'd wrap him in pipes or he'd, he'd clobber him and Popeye would be laying there and all of a sudden that can of spinach, he'd try to, if he could get that can of spinach. And, and I remember one time Brutus wrapped him up in a steel girder and Popeye was like this. And I don't know how he did it, but he sucked that, he sucked that spinach through his pipe. And as soon as he got that spinach, the power came, remember? And he clobbered Brutus, and then he, he, olive oil, and he walked off into the sunset together, okay? I know that was simplistic. I know that was very simplistic. But the, but the anointing of the Spirit is the power you need when you need it. God will anoint you with his Spirit when you need, a, when you need power. Now, here, here's my definition, okay? Here, here's, my, here's my thing here. The anointing of the Spirit is for circumstances when you need extra strength or power or to do something extraordinary. Okay? The anointing of the Spirit is for when you need extra power or strength, but you're about to do something extraordinary. Okay? Extraordinary simply means 
unusual or remarkable. Okay, God anointed Jesus. Jesus would go around healing people and doing miracles. Okay, God doesn't really anoint us for that, okay? God anoints us, I think, I think God anoints us with his spirit for just everyday life, okay? And, and I think he, he gives us an extra portion of his spirit for power just for everyday life. Like, for instance, when you're at the store and you have chosen, and if you're, if you're with me, you're, this is going to happen. All these lines, you choose the wrong line. And whatever line you choose, that's the line that's just stopped. And all the other lines are moving. And you know what? I did that not so long ago. I did that. And, and I knew I chose the wrong line. And the line that I originally wanted to choose is going 100 mile an hour. And I'm just standing there. But I, all of a sudden, I felt this peace come upon me. That's the anointing. I just felt this peace. Like, you know what, Matt? Why don't you take this time to pray instead of just worrying and arguing and getting angry? Cause, or how about this? You're on 270 or whatever crazy highway, and you, and, and you can see the traffic, and you're saying to yourself, if I get in the left lane, everything will be fine. And you fight over to get into that left lane, and you find out that's the lane that's closed. And now you've got to get all the way back over. I've done that, too. All of a sudden, not all the time, but all of a sudden, I can feel the anointing come over me, and there's like a, there's like a, there's like a peace. There's like, there's like, it's going to be okay. Um, I was at the bank yesterday, and I went through the drive up, and there's this guy parked next to the bank, you know, where they got the window, you know. I said, I don't. Can I tell you something about myself? I don't like those tubes that shoot your money into the store because I'm afraid it's going to get caught in there. And they're never going to, it's out, and, and, and they're not going to get my money out. And so I hate using the tubes. Well, anyway, there's this guy, and he's sitting in the main spot, and all of a sudden I'm looking, and his car is turned off, and he's looking through his paperwork, just sitting there. And, and, and finally, you know, he's not moving. He's got the whole thing jammed up now, and, and, and he's, just, he's just sitting there. He's reading. And I'm thinking, why won't you go in? Why, you know, why are you reading your bank statements here? And then, and then I heard him say, well, I'm afraid I'm going to, I'm afraid I'm going to bounce a check. Well, how is sitting there jamming up the whole thing going to help? <laughs> and I, I prayed for the anointing to come upon the young ladies who were having to deal with him. <laughs> the anointing all of a sudden can give you patience to get you through something, then do something that you wouldn't nearly do. And here's where I really found this out. When I started pastoring years ago, years ago when I started preaching and pastoring years ago, I would visit people in the hospital and who, they, they might be, who might be really sick. And I felt like when I went to visit them, I felt like I needed to have some deep theological answer for what they were going through, and I needed to give them some type of wisdom, you know, for, for the things they were going through. And I, I would get all nervous and, and, and worked up and anxious because, because I thought, I don't know if I really, I don't know if I, I don't even have anything. And then I found out that, that when I got there, you know what? They, they really didn't want to hear anything deep or they didn't want to hear me even talk. They just wanted me to hold their hand. And I could, feel, I could feel the anointing of the Spirit come upon me to say, Matt, you don't have to come up with anything. You don't have to say anything. You're not, at, at, at 19, you don't even have anything wise enough to tell these people, okay? All, you want them to, all they want you to do is hold their hand and to be with them. And I, and I learned that very fast, okay? And here's what also I learned when, when, with people is that we all have friends who have problems and they have stories they want to tell you. And here's what I found out that, 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 that with a lot of our friends, and we have this, and, and I think we've all been guilty of this, and I think we need to work on this, is that when our friends say to us, do you have, do you have a minute to talk? Can, can we just talk? And here's what I learned is that we have a bad habit when people ask us that and they start talking. We have a bad habit of saying things like, well, here's what I would do. Or when I was your age, here's what I did. Or they're telling us their problems and all of a sudden we say, well, let me tell you what I'm going through. And all they really wanted to do was just have you listen. 
And now we're carrying on and on. You know what we call that in the business? Unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice. And let me tell you, when I was going through the toughest times of my life, I didn't want unsolicited advice. I just wanted people to listen. So we got to be better listeners. And here's, here's the prayer I think we need to pray. When someone comes to us and says, can we just talk? Can we just? Here's what we need to do. We need to say, Lord, could you anoint me to shut up? <laughs> I, bet you've never, I bet you've never prayed that before, have you? Lord, anoint me to shut up. Anoint my lips to stay closed and to just listen. And to not try to tell people what they should do. That's a very good prayer. Because that takes extraordinary strength, okay? The last thing I want to talk about is, he said, the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news. I do not think, I do not think we hear enough good news, do we? Would anybody like to hear some good news? Wow, nobody. We just want bad news? You want me to go on my phone and find some for you? <laughs> I mean, come on, winter's over, that's good news. I'm going to give you a little good news. Can you handle it? Can you handle just a little good news for about another two minutes? God loves you more than you can imagine. That's the best news I can give you today. He loves you more than you can imagine. I, I, this is going to be hard to understand, and, and, and this is going to be hard to, this is a hard concept, but I want you to get this, okay? God loves you more than your spouse more than your children, more than anybody. Hard to imagine? He loves you more than your spouse will. He loves you more than your kids will. He loves you more than your parents will. Can you imagine that? God loves you more than your parents even love you. Okay, and here's what else I learned is that he's not out to get you. There are so many people who say, Matt, there's no way God loves me because he's out to get me. And I said, you got all wrong. God is not out to get you. In fact, he's trying to help you. Not only is not God, out, God not out to get you, he's trying to actually help you. And here's what I've learned. He may not take all of our problems away, but he'll get us through them. I said this at Carlos's funeral yesterday. He and I were, he and I, he and I and Jim were all with this little triangle, old Pentecostals, you know. And uh, I said this, I said, I'd rather go through the storm with Jesus than sail my life without him. Boy, back in the day, you would have been all going nuts over that. <laughs> <laughs> that'd have preached the house down back in the day i'd rather sail through the storm with jesus than to sail my life can i just can somebody say amen in this building today thank you that's a little weak but i'll take it um <laughs> he's not going anywhere okay he's with us through the distance ever 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 go to a restaurant for a while and you like going there and all of a sudden something happens you just quit going that happened with me and laura i won't tell you where it's at but she got her salad and there was a metal brillo pad in their salad a chunk of brillo pad was i thought it was a crouton um <laughs> Oh, we, we'd eaten there numerous times, and then, you know, you get, a, you get a Brillo pad in your salad, and it's like, I'm done. Now, if there's a crouton, Bobby, you know me. If there's a crouton in my cheese and bacon fries, I'm just going to pick it out, and I'm going to keep eating. But isn't it funny how all of a sudden, can't go there no more. Ain't going there no more, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> We've been back, and then it was bad again. But anyway... <laughs> think of all here's the thought i had all the bad experiences i've caused for god and he hasn't ditched me yet god says i'm here for the long haul that's good news i'm here for the long haul even if you really mess up and even if even if you you totally mess this whole thing up god said i'm not leaving you i'm here i'm in it i'm in it for the long haul i'm not going anywhere and the last one is this he says he's got good news for the poor. I'm going to close with this. I don't think, and a lot of people may disagree with me on this, I don't think God looks at rich and poor like we do. I don't think he does. 
I don't think God looks at rich and poor like we, because how do we do it? Money, right? Well, they got a lot of money. They must be rich or they live in a big house or they drive fancy cars or, or they go on fancy vacations. You know where me and Laura are going next year? Puxatani Phil to see him. We're going to see him. That's how we judge rich. That's how we judge rich and poor though. I don't think God judges rich and poor like that. I think God looks what's on God looks at what's on the inside. Okay? God looks like God looks what's on the inside. And 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 here's here this is the last thing I'm gonna say. Somebody said this. This is not this isn't for me. That when we're gone, people will not remember us for the money we had or the cars we drove or the houses we lived in. They'll remember us for how we made them feel. They will remember us how we made them feel. How do you make people feel? If you make people feel good, if you make people feel loved, if you make people feel cared for, you're making them rich. So God is anointing you to make people rich. Because that's what God sees. I have come. He's anointed me with his spirit. I have good news. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful that Jesus came, that you anointed him, you chose him. He is the chosen one. He is the Messiah. He came from heaven to save us. We're going to take communion here in a little bit, and we're going to remember all the things he did for us, and we are grateful for him. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.